it's good to be here. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I've been coming down to uh, Tuscarawas County to do uh, uh, presentations on uh, export opportunities, uh, economic risk, things like that in international markets. And years ago, people would ask, why, why are you going down to Eastern Ohio every year to do these presentations? What's down there? They don't ask me anymore. They know what's down here. They know there's a major energy revolution going on down here, and it's having a major impact on the United States, on the state of Ohio, on this region, but also around the world. And that's what I want to talk about now. I want to focus on two things in my presentation today. I'd like to talk about what, is, what are the developments in the shale industry outside of the United States, what other countries or what other regions will we be seeing shale development similar to the one here? And also, what kind of impact is the shale industry having on U.S. competitiveness, particularly export competitiveness in the manufacturing sector? We've already heard quite a lot about that in the, from the local perspective, from the state perspective. We're going to look at it a little more from the national perspective. How is this boosting U.S. export competitiveness? Uh, a couple things to consider before we go on. Uh, right now, the United States is home to less than 10% of the world's sh known shale gas reserves. Less than 10%. Now, obviously, some of those reserves are in countries where it's very difficult to extract them. But nevertheless, we are home to less than 10% of shale gas reserves and less than 15% of known shale oil reserves. Now, of course, both of those numbers are going to change because this is a very dynamic industry. Uh, many countries are far less advanced uh, than the United States in terms of exploration activities. Uh, much less is known about the uh, fields in many of these countries. So there's a lot to learn. This is a very dynamic figure. But nevertheless, uh, this is an international industry. And there are many countries, including many economic competitors of the United States, that have significant reserves of shale gas and shale oil. First, a little bit about uh, the development here in the United States. We're all pretty familiar with this. But as you see, uh, in the years before this revolution, uh, there were fears that we were going to run out of oil and gas. We were going to become ever more dependent upon foreign sources of oil and gas. But as you can see on both of those charts there, that's not the case. There's been a dramatic ups upswing in both oil production and gas production in the United States, driven in many ways by the shale revolution. And of course, offshore uh, deep water developments also have a major impact on the oil output, but nevertheless, we are seeing a tremendous change. And not only does this lead us to what may one day be energy self-sufficiency, it may lead one day, and I'm going to focus on this a little bit in this talk today, it could lead to the United States becoming a major oil and gas exporter. Not just the United States, but also Canada and Mexico, who I'll talk about a little bit as well. This has tremendous implications for the United States economy going forward. Uh, this map shows the known shale gas and oil reserves around the world. And as you can see, we're not alone. There are major reserves in many, in, in fact, major reserves in all continents in the, around the world. Uh, we are currently, and you'll see on a chart in a little bit, fourth in terms of known oil gas reserves. As you can see, they, they run the gamut from major reserves in Russia, Europe, China, and elsewhere. In fact, if you look at the chart there on the right, you'll see we're in fourth place at the moment. Uh, China has more known uh, shale gas reserves than the United States. Uh, Al Algeria and Argentina also do. Uh, Canada and Mexico have almost the same amount of shale gas res reserves as we do. And in other countries, and you'll see a little bit later, there's significant reserves as well. However, however, there's a, a big difference. The, as you know, the shale gas here in Ohio and elsewhere in the United States is genu generally much easier to extract and much cheaper to extract than in most of these other countries. And I'll go into a little more detail uh, later on just uh, how, what, what the situation is in the different countries. Uh, I'm going to go around the world a little bit. We're going to take a look at about four or five different countries and regions and their shale gas and their shale uh, oil development and where they stand vis-a-vis -vis the United States. Let's start with Canada. Canada has uh, shale gas reserves nearly at the level the United States has. So far, there hasn't been that much development in the shale industry in Canada because gas prices have been so low. Uh, this has discouraged a lot of investment in the industry. However, there's an important factor here. The, the most of the Canadian reserves are located in British Columbia and the Northwest Territories. And where are we going to see a lot of demand for gas in the future? We're already seeing it. Asia. So there's a tremendous export potential here for Canada. Not to the United States, because obviously we have our own, but to Asia. And this is a, a major opportunity for Canada. This will probably lead to a sharp increase in investment in the shale industry in Canada in the coming years. To our south, Latin America, there's two main countries in the shale industry right now. That would be Mexico and Argentina. 
Uh, Mexico has also sizable shale gas reserves located along the Gulf Coast. Uh, Argentina right now has the, uh, I believe it's the second largest, or th yeah, second largest known reserves of shale gas in the world. However, if you've ever done business in the energy sector in Argentina, you know it's fraught with risk. Uh, the government has recently nationalized many uh, elements of the energy industry in Argentina, and this is discouraging a lot of investment in the country at a time when they desperately need it. That's a country that has serious energy shortages. Uh, they have uh, an economy that's on the brink of a serious crisis this year. So they need the investment in the shale industry, but there's a lot of concern among major in energy players about investing in Argentina. China. China is home to the largest known reserves of shale gas in the world. Most of it is located in the central Sichuan region. And if you know that region, it's an extremely highly populated region. So that brings along a lot of risks. Another risk in China is the fact that there's not enough water. China is already suffering from severe water shortages. So as we heard earlier from Dr. Chase, Dr. Chase, there are tremendous water resources needed to develop a shale industry, but China is already suffering from severe water shortages. Another factor hindering the growth of the shale industry in China is the fact that most of their shale gas reserves are, three times, are located three times deeper than they are here in Ohio. Moreover, the geologic formations that they're located in are not very conducive to cheaply uh, extracting it from the ground. Nevertheless, China has huge demands for energy, and this is pushing forward investment despite these uh, constraints. Africa is another region where we have uh, significant shale gas reserves. Uh, in the north, in Algeria, uh, there are significant reserves. Now, there are a couple of risks there as well. There, uh, there's a lack of water. Most of them are located in the Sahara Desert. And the other risk, of course, is that there is a lot of unrest in that country. If you uh, follow the news, last year there was a major, gas, a major attack on a gas facility in, located in southern Algeria in which dozens of people, including dozens of foreign energy uh, workers, were killed by militants from neighboring Mali. So there's also a lot of risk to investing in Algeria, but European uh, uh, consumers, and I'll get back to Europe in a little bit because Europe is going to be a key player in the market for shale gas, uh, are desperate to, to, to find new supplies of energy, Algeria could potentially be one. We're already seeing significant investment from European energy companies in Algeria. The other is South Africa. South Africa has pretty sizable reserves of shale gas, mostly located in what's called the Karoo, which is also an arid region. So again, water issues are going to be a, a hindrance to the development of the industry in South Africa. Europe. Europe's an interesting case because there are some sizable shale uh, gas uh, reserves uh, to be found in Europe. But many countries, including countries such as France and the Netherlands, which have sizable reserves, have already banned the process of fracking. While in other countries, for example, Romania and Bulgaria, there have been major protests against the use of fracking to extract shale gas. So the, the industry in Europe has really struggled to get off the ground. And we're seeing the first major developments taking place in Poland, which has, as you can see, the second largest uh, shale gas reserves in Europe. There'll be some production starting this year in, Euro in, in Poland, and they're hopeful that that can be the first successful shale gas industry in Europe. And as I mentioned, Europe is desperate f to find natural gas uh, resources. At the moment, many countries in Europe are dependent upon Russia for their gas resources, uh, for their gas supplies, and this leaves them at the uh, political mercy of uh, Russia in, to some degree. And in a couple times in recent years, the Russians have actually turned off the taps, uh, particularly during the coldest parts of the winter. I, I mentioned that if things, all, if things go right here, not only will we be self-sufficient in, in, uh, in our oil and gas production, but we'll become a major exporter if things work right. Well, where right now, we do export some natural gas, as you can see, but it's primarily to Canada and Mexico. However, if you look at the chart, on the right, the demand for natural gas is coming primarily from Europe and Asia. Uh, they do not have uh, enough supply internally, even with shale gas, to meet their internal demand. So this is a tremendous growth opportunity for the U.S. industry down the road. So we looked a little bit at the global industry. You can see there's shale gas all over the world. It may not be as easy or as cheap to extract as, here, as, it, as it is here in Ohio, but there's a tremendous need for the product, and, there's going, and that's going to fuel investment in the, in the industry outside of the United States. But what impact is the shale gas industry having on the U.S. economy? And I can tell you it's having a very positive impact. Not only is it having a major impact here in eastern Ohio, but the, the U.S.'s entire economic competitiveness is improving. And in, and in economics, the, end of, the name of the game is economic competitiveness. 
Are you competitive on cost? Are you competitive on infrastructure? Are you competitive on productivity? And certainly here, this is helping us to become extremely competitive on cost. Uh, the first chart, just, uh, this is the global economy. And if you see over the last couple of years, the global economy has been trending downward. In fact, this year, the global economy is not even, it's not even going to grow by 3% last year, 2013, excuse me. So global economic growth has been slowing. Why is this? Because many of the world's developed economies are stagnant. Europe is st in, a, in a crisis. Japan has struggled to grow. And we're seeing slower growth in emerging markets. Uh, five or six years ago, everybody was certain that, yes, we know the developed world is going to slow, but the emerging markets, they're going to save the day. They're going to buy everything. But in fact, there's a lot of uncertainty in emerging markets, and this is leading to lower levels of growth. So how does this affect the United States? So you can see the United States uh, last year uh, grew by just a little more than, uh, grew by 2% or just a little more than 2%. Most of that growth coming in the second half of the year. And this comes, on top, this comes on, the, on top of the fact that consumers in the United States, they're still not buying. Uh, consumer spending in the United States is still very weak. Where did the growth come from? It came from exports. And why did it come from exports? It came from exports because we are suddenly a lot more competitive economically than we were a few years ago. And the fact that we have this new source of, uh, these new energy sources driving down energy costs, as we saw earlier, is a tremendous factor in that increased economic competitiveness. Uh, competitiveness, which is so vital to our future. And it's not just the United States, as I, as I mentioned. Mexico and Canada also have sizable shale gas and oil industries, or potential industries, let's say. And that's going to drive growth all across North America. If you look at that chart on the right, that shows the average annual rate of economic growth over the next five years. North America, the United States, Canada, and Mexico, we're going we're to grow by more than 3% per year over the next five years. That's our forecast. And that may actually be a little bit below what happens. Uh, we have not seen that level of economic growth in the United States since the 1990s for a per persistent amount of time. And why is that? It's because of the improved economic competitiveness of our countries. And as I mentioned, cost competitiveness is a very important uh, component of that. And the shale gas and shale oil industry is a very important component of that competitive, uh, cost competitiveness. We're going to easily outgrow the developed markets of Asia. That includes Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. And we're going to certainly outgrow Europe. These markets are losing competitiveness vis-a-vis -vis the United States. And we're already seeing that so much manufacturing investment, which used to go to other countries, used to go to China, used to go to uh, East Europe, used to go to uh, Southeast Asia. So much of that has come back here to the United States. Why? Because it makes cost sense. And why does it make cost sense? In many ways, because, in many, uh, in many ways because the shale industry has driven down energy costs so significantly. You can, you can read it from all the, 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 the quotes from uh, foreign politicians about how do we compete with the United States and their new low energy cost. How do we do it? We well, can see there, just an, it just uh, shows you a little more just how competitive the U.S. has become. We're expecting our growth to accelerate significantly in the coming years. This economic competitiveness, the export competitors, competing for export markets. If I'm going to build a factory that's going to export all around the world, where am I going to do it? And five, ten years ago, you'd have said, I'm going to do it in China, of course. You know, five years ago, maybe I'll do it in Mexico. You're, so many of them are saying today, we're going to do that here in the United States. Not only is that our market, but it's not that expensive to produce there anymore. So what should we take away from this? Just a few key points. Uh, the, the United States is clearly the world leader in this industry and will remain so for, for some time. Moreover, since the United States has a huge first mover advantage in this, companies involved in the shale industry here in the United States are going to be in high demand and all of those other countries that I showed you have significant reserves of shale gas and shale oil. Tremendous opportunities for U.S. companies working here in Ohio and elsewhere to, to lend their expertise overseas. Uh, Canada and Mexico also are going to be major players in this industry, and that bears watching because they will become competitors. If we reach that export at that point where we can export our product around the world, they're going to be our leading competitors in the future. Canada has almost the same reserves as we do, but their population is only one-ninth of ours, so they're going to need to export. Uh, the industry elsewhere is in some difficult uh, countries, uh, countries where it's difficult to do business, uh, where the, res the, the uh, gas and oil reserves are in different, difficult geological uh, formations. That type of, uh, those type of problems are going to hinder the development somewhat in those markets. But the demand is going to keep growing. Uh, make no mistake about it, demand for shale gas, shale oil is going to keep growing, particularly in Asia and in Europe. Uh, and the economic competitiveness, as I mentioned, is going to continue to uh, trend upwards. It's going to provide a significant boost for the U.S. economy going forward, and particularly the manufacturing sector. The U.S. manufacturing sector is already reaping the benefits from this, and this will continue in the years ahead. 
So if anyone has any questions, obviously we're a big group, but if anyone has any questions in the future, there's my email address. By all means, uh, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have on foreign markets. And I thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this fantastic conference that uh, you have here today. Thank you. Thank you.